So this is uh, discussing energy related organelles. Um, you're going to have uh, two different processes that occur. Uh, photosynthesis and cellular respiration. Both of these, depending whether it's a plant or animal, you're going to have the chloroplast, which is going to be responsible for the energy production within plants, and the mitochondria, which is responsible for energy production within um, animals. Um, what I want you to know is that plants, algae, and cyanobacteria all undergo, I'm sure what you've already heard, photosynthesis. Uh, photosynthesis, kind of knowing that you are responsible for production of carbon, carbohydrates and oxygen, uh, knowing the reactants, solar energy, carbon dioxide, and water. Uh, so you've got the sun, and you've got uh, carbon dioxide, which is uh, breathed off from us, and then you've got water coming in. And all that is going to help the trees and help the plants make carbs and make oxygen. Uh, many organisms, like we said previously, will require cellular respiration. This is the process by which chemical energy of carbohydrates is converted to that of ATP. And if you remember previously, uh, in the uh, previous chapters, we talked about ATP. What is that? And ATP is the energy currency of the cell. That is what we use the carbohydrates. We use the uh, various different uh, biochemical reactions in order to produce this ATP. And if you remember, ATP stands for adenine, which is a nitrogenous base, tri meaning three phosphates. So you have nitrogenous space attached to three phosphates. And it's the breaking of these high energy phosphate bonds which produces the energy. So cellular respiration is going to take that carbohydrates and oxygen, which is produced by photosynthesis, and we're going to turn that into carbon dioxide, water, and energy. So knowing the reactants and products of photosynthesis and cellular respiration will be on the exam. As we said previously, you have the chloroplasts, and the chloroplasts are going to be made of three important structures. They're going to be called uh, made of uh, the stroma, which are going to be these uh, two membrane-bound um, uh, fluid-filled spaces. And then you're going to have a series of interconnected flattened sacs called the thylakoid. And the thyl thylakoid are going to stack in things called granum. So again, the stroma, which is this inner membrane fluid-filled space. The thylakoid are these flattened sac-like structure, structures that are interconnected, and whenever they stack on top of each other, they form something called granum. Uh, mitochondria, I think every single person knows that it's a powerhouse of the cell. If you don't, well, you do now. Uh, mitochondria, uh, we've learned so much through them. They're responsible for, of course, m the majority of the biochemical reactions that occur uh, with at a subcellular level, they're responsible for energy production. And what's kind of unique is that uh, mitochondria, your mitochondria comes from your mother. Um, your father does not pass the mitochondria on to um, onto, uh, the offspring. So uh, I have my mother's mitochondria, my mom has her mom's mitochondria. Her mom has her mom's mitochondria, and so on and so forth. Mitochondria composition. Uh, there's two different structures called the matrix and the, the cristae. The matrix is just this inner fluid-filled space, whereas the cristae is this inner membrane of the mitochondria that invaginates. So uh, you can see the invagination here. The matrix is just a fluid-filled space. Uh, the mitochondrial matrix is um, uh, comparable to that of the uh, stroma. Both of these are fluid-filled spaces. Briefly, we'll talk about the cytoskeleton. You have actin, intermediate filaments, and microtubules. The microtubules are going to be responsible for uh, movement. Microtubules, movement. Interfilament or intermediate filaments are going to be responsible for uh, just pretty much maintaining structural integrity. They're going to be responsible for structure, keeping, making sure that the structure of the cell um, is maintained. There's three parts, though, I'd like you to know. Actin, intermediate filaments, microtubules. Microtubules, movement. Intermediate filaments, structure. Intermediate filaments, like I said, they play a structural role. It's probably pretty important. Um, they support the plasma membrane and cell-to-cell -cell junctions. Microtubules, small cylindrical organelle composed of tubulin. Uh, 
uh, protein around an empty central pore. The centrosome is a central microtubule organizing center of the cell. In animals, it contains two centrioles. Here we have a picture of a centriole. I uh, just kind of want you to know what cilia and flagella are. Uh, both of these are involved in movement. They both have a similar structure. Uh, the flagella, long, slender extension used for locomotion by some bacteria, protozoans, and sperm. And it's this movement here of the cilium that you can see that it has this fluid-like fluid movement that helps it propel along. Just knowing cilia and flagella involved in movement. I want you to know the definition of the endosymbiotic theory. The explanation of the evolution of eukaryotic organelles by phagocytosis of prokaryotes. Some of the evidence supports this as follows. And I'll let you guys read that. Just know there is evidence for the endosymbiotic theory. Uh, I just want you to realize that the prokaryotes are theorized to have developed, or they are theorized to have formed the eukaryotes. Thank you, guys.